All right, this is AP 120's Lab 7's lecture. Uh, some of the information is related to the material in and activities in the lab manuals. So for those of you who are only taking this course online, um, this is a little extra information. However, most of this lecture is important for everybody. So in the demonstrations of simple diffusion, we dump some dye crystals into water. What happens? Well, diffusion of potassium manganate. Uh, also tried gases. It turns out if liquids dissolve into gases, the gases will diffuse toward each other. And when they meet, they'll have a chemical reaction. So hydrochloric acid gas and ammonium hydroxide gas, when they meet in the center of a tube, will form a salt precipitate. And I'll let you know where they meet up as they diffuse. So solids can dissolve and diffuse. Uh, gases, uh, liquids can dissolve, become gases and diffuse. Things diffuse. And then, of course, you can put dyes in a agarose gel, a semi-solid uh, matrix that allow things to spread out within it. And then if one dye, say the methylene blue, is a lot bigger than the other dye, the uh, potassium permanganate, well, then they will diffuse out at different rates. I'll go ahead and give it away. The smaller things diffuse faster. All right, this is the way to set up for the lab's uh, filtration activity. Basically, you have a starch, glucose, sodium chloride, charcoal mixture. You have filter paper in a funnel. It's poured through. Liquid will or filtrate will come out, but some stuff will get stuck in the filter paper. Surprise, surprise, it's the charcoal, because charcoal is really big, and the tiny holes in the filter paper stop the charcoal from passing through. All right, solution. The word solution means one or more substances dissolved in another substance. The solvent is the substance doing the dissolving. For our class, the solvent is always water. Again, for our class, the substance dissolving is always water. In the real world, it can be other things as well. Uh, and the solute is the substance being dissolved. So over here, the solution is 1% glucose solution. Solvent is water. Solute is glucose. All right. So you should be able to tell me what the solvent, the solute, and percent water. So for instance, A, the solvent is water. The solute is glucose. Percent water is 90%. 100 minus the 10% glucose leaves 90%. Uh, sodium chloride protein and then this one is the trick question this is not a solution it is only pure water so that's the trick question all right in cells we have a cell membrane it defines the cell separates inside from outside and it is selectively permeable which means some things can cross the membrane and other things cannot so water and really small nonpolar substances can cross the membrane freely going either direction Large things, charged particles, cannot cross the membrane. They're not able to pass through readily. Um, passive transport means materials are moving from high concentration to low concentration, and no energy is required. Passive transport. So uh, diffusion, simple diffusion, is an example of passive transport. So anything, water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, small nonpolar molecules, can diffuse through the cell membrane in either direction, going from high concentration to low. Osmosis is water. Water is diffusing. So osmosis is only the diffusion of water. It's simple diffusion, the simple diffusion of water. And then filtration uh, involves some sort of structure that allows things to pass through based on size. And facilitated diffusion is when you have a protein present in the membrane that lets things that don't normally get through get through. But it would still be diffusion, so moving from high concentration to low with no energy needed. So across the membrane, have dyes on one side, nothing on the other side, high to low. Over time, they will pass through the openings in the membrane. Uh, this would be like a filter paper. And eventually, they'll go back and forth, back and forth, so you have the same concentration on both sides. This can work similarly with two different dyes on opposite sides. Eventually, they will mix so that there's the same concentration on both sides across the membrane. 
All right, so for instance, which direction will glucose move? 10% glucose on one side, 1% glucose on the other. Here's the membrane that lets glucose pass through. You better say it's going from a side A to side B. It will move to side B, high concentration to low concentration. Water will go the other way. All right, diffusion is faster at higher temperatures or lower. Do, 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 do. It's higher temperatures. Hotter, faster. Uh, lower molecular weight, smaller, or higher molecular weight, bigger. It's smaller. Smaller things go faster. Smaller things, things can make it through the nooks and crannies. And then steeper concentration gradient or smaller concentration gradient. Here's smaller concentration gradient, say 40 to 30 percent. Steeper, 100 percent to 30 percent. Obviously, very much steeper. If you imagine a ball rolling down the hill, it's going to go faster with a steeper concentration gradient. Ta da! All right. So, for instance, here we have 40% sugar uh, solution in a dialysis tubing, and that is in water. Over here, we have 80% sugar solution in dialysis tubing, and that is in pure water. Holes will, uh, are too small for sugar, so sugar cannot go through, but water can. So, which direction will water move? Well, obviously, it's going to move into the dialysis tubing. Now, which one will go faster? Faster will be this one over here, the 80%, because again, 0% in the water, 80% here, that is a steeper concentration gradient. Do, 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 do. All right, water, uh, moving to water, diffusing through a membrane is going to go from high concentration of water to lower concentration of water. So this side is 96% water, this side is 92% water, so it's going to go from B to A, going from high concentration to low. Another way to think about it is that water goes to where there's more solute. So over here, 8% salt protein solute, over here, 4%. So water is going to go from the less solute to the more solute. It's going to go to the hypertonic solution. Water always moves to the hypertonic solution. And then eventually, if it is possible, the concentrations will equal out on the two sides, even though the amounts of fluid will be different. So, hypotonic, lower relative concentration of solutes. Hypertonic, higher concentrations of solutes. Isotonic, same concentration on both sides. So, over here with this thing and the membrane, side A is hypotonic, it's 4% sugar. Side B is hypertonic, so it's 10% sugar. 10% sugar, hypertonic compared to 4% sugar. Osmosis will occur to solution B, going from A to B to the hypertonic solution. And again, eventually, if possible, it'll become isotonic, 7% sugar on both sides. All right, solution B is what to solution A? Solution B is hypotonic compared to solution A. Solution B is what's the solution C? Solution B is hypertonic compared to solution C. Again, these terms are all relative, comparing two things to each other. So, uh, here is a dialysis bag of 5% glucose in pure water. The fluid in the bag is what compared to outside. The fluid in the bag is dot, 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 hypertonic. It has 5% glucose. Outside has 0% glucose. Um, now, if the inside the dialysis tube is 5% glucose and outside the solution is 4% glucose, the fluid in the bag is what compared to the fluid outside? Surprise, surprise, it is still hypertonic. There's still more glucose solution, higher concentration, 5% inside than outside. Cells. Our real cells want to be in an isotonic solution. So our plasma in our blood is such that the amount of water entering cells, the amount of water leaving is the same. Concentrations are the same. If you put red blood cells in a hypotonic solution that has less um, solute, that means water is going to go into the cells. The cells will swell and potentially burst or lyse. That is bad. And if you put the cells in a hypertonic solution, a solution with lots of solute, then water will leave the cell. The cell will shrivel up and crenate, so becoming sort of starry shaped crenation. And that also will destroy the function of the red blood cells. Isotonics, what our cells want. 
So the solution in IV that is going directly into someone's bloodstream is what compared to blood plasma? Concentration-wise, solution in IV is what compared to blood plasma? Do 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 do. It is isotonic. It is the same concentration. Not necessarily the same components, but the same concentration. So the red blood cells stay in an isotonic solution. All right. So what about other things that can't cross the membrane? Well, as we mentioned, we have facilitated diffusion, which lets specific things that cannot normally cross pass through. So again, high concentration to low, but only where these protein channels are. These are acting as windows or doors, allowing something specific to enter or exit the cell. Still passive transport, still no energy required. In neurons, uh, this happens when neurotransmitters bind to uh, these special closed channels. The channels open, and then ions, like sodium ions, will flood into the cell, leaving lots of positive charge from outside to inside. And this is important because it helps to uh, allow for the signaling to cause the generation of a nerve impulse. Ion channels opening signal the generation of a nerve impulse and are the actual action potential. Opening channels allowing high concentration to low concentration, facilitated diffusion. Uh, filtration. Filtration is having something pass through a filter. A filter usually only lets things of a certain size and smaller pass through. This is sort of what we were doing in the lab from the lab manual. And big things that can't get through the hole are stopped from getting through while smaller things pass through. And this is caused in our lab by gravity. Usually in our spotty, it's, say, in the blood vessels, and then it is pressure, blood pressure, allowing things to leave the blood capillaries based on high pressure in the blood capillaries, lower pressure in the tissues. Things can leave, but only things that are small enough to pass through these little gaps. And that's going to be things that are smaller than proteins, really small stuff. Again, high pressure, low pressure, things move from high to low pressure. All right, so passive cell transport. We have simple diffusion, high concentration to low, no energy. Osmosis is water, high concentration to low, no energy needed. Facilitated diffusion, you need something to allow the diffusion to occur, but then after that it is still high concentration to low, no energy needed. Active transport, this inner cell does have to pay to cause the molecules to move, so energy is expended. And we're taking things from a low area and moving them to a high concentration area. So active transport and also the use of vesicles, endocytosis, and exocytosis. So active transport is kind of like facilitated diffusion, except now we're using energy to move something from low concentration to high concentration. So we have a carrier protein that is acting as a door. ATP is the energy needed to open the door to allow solute to enter against its concentration gradient. In our neurons, we have active transport occurring all the time via the sodium-potassium ion pumps, constantly moving potassium into the cell and sodium out, requires energy, and is critical for keeping the charge balance across the membrane of our neurons, keeping high concentration of sodium outside, high concentration of potassium on the inside. Very important. This is a form of active transport. And resting potential gets maintained. We know resting potential for neurons is negative 70 millivolts. Again, it is these pumps, sodium potassium ion pumps, that are making sure there's high sodium on the outside, high potassium on the inside. The distribution of ions leads to more negative charge on the inside, more positive charge on the outside. Remember, there's a lot of other things. There's the negatively charged and the positively charged inside and outside the neurons. So this is the balance we get negative 70 millivolts for the resting potential. Vesicles can be used to move materials out of a cell, exocytosis, or move materials into the cell. Vesicles require a lot of energy to form and move, and so vesicles, endocytosis, exocytosis always requires energy. Exocytosis, materials made in the cell exiting the cell, Endocytosis, things from outside the cell being brought in, forming vesicles to carry it wherever it needs to go. Phagocytosis, so you're eating, brings in big solids. Pinocytosis, so you're drinking, brings in liquids, the surrounding fluids. Nervous system also allows for exocytosis. This occurs when the uh, synaptic vessels release the neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. 
Isn't that exciting?